This uh, next white paper we're going to talk about is called the Las Vegas Taxi Cab Test. And why I want to talk to you guys about this test is because it's really quite amazing. And I'll just, I will just tell you up front that I was really impressed with the results of this test. I don't, now this is not where we're going to test the oil and look at like we did the last one, how the oil is. We're actually going to have the, the teardown experts tear down and look at parts of the engine and evaluate them after this long term use and the transmission. This is both a transmission and an engine tear down test. This test to set the stage for it, Amsoil used the Zero W20 because this test was actually started before the 5W20 came out in the Signature Series. So they used the Zero W20 in a bunch of Chrysler products, Dodge products that were used as taxi cabs in Las Vegas, Nevada, where the average temperature many times was far in excess of 100 degrees. And if you've been to Las Vegas, that's probably an understatement because if it's the right time of year, it might be 120 outside instead of just 100 degrees. Arduous conditions, taxi cabs, these, a lot of these taxi cabs ran 24 hours a day with different drivers, okay? The service interval in this test is actually amazing to me. It's a thousand hours. A thousand hours on zero W20. <laughs> That is a lot of time, let's just be serious. Now, they were using an EPA standard of for all city driving a taxi cab of 15 miles per hour. So that would equate to 15,000 miles or 1,000 hours. Now, they actually say in the test that that's not what we usually do. If we used our usual test, it would have been closer to 40,000 miles equivalent. So <coughs> this is just a lot of arduous conditions in a test with a 20 weight oil in these taxi cabs. So keep that in mind. Now I'll stop here for a minute and tell you that the test and its duration uh, was 7,033 hours, 2010. Dodge Charger with a 2.7 liter engine. This test, uh, they had a four speed automatic transmission that gives you the information on that, and it was using the uh, ATF, our ATF, which is ATF plus four rated for Chrysler, the original, not the low viscosity transmission fluid, because that is not rated to meet the ATF plus four for Chrysler. And the 0W20, the ASM and Amsoil's indicator for it, 0W20 Signature Series engine oil, okay? Come on, catch up with me. Now the first test they evaluate here is the transmission using the ATF. Now, the transmission during this period of time was not changed. It ran the entire time. So, the entire 7,000 hours the transmission fluid was run, it was never changed, okay? Jesus. And, the way these evaluators do is they'll tear down a component, they have a standard set of evaluations they do, and they rate it from zero to 10. Zero meaning complete failure, probably pieces in front of them. 10 meaning that you can't tell the difference between this component and the brand new never been used, okay? That's how they rate these. It's a standard that's known across the country for engine rating, transmission rating. We even have one on the E-Tech engines from uh, Evinrude that were done the same way where they're torn down and evaluated on a zero to 10 scale. So this is the valve body sludge deposits. And on a scale of one to 10, it's a 9.6, meaning that it's virtually hard to detect anything. It's so clean, it's in such good shape. And, and keep in mind, this is after over 7,000 hours of operation are, in a taxi cab. Are you gonna stipulate 200,000 miles on that or not? Oh, you could easily. Okay. You could easily. I mean, the <coughs> Amdell said using this this factor of 15 
miles per hour that's used for city traffic and EPA doing fuel economy testing, they use that. But most of the time, if we used our mixed city driving and used 35 miles per hour, we'll take 35 times 7,000, and you're at over 200,000 miles. And so those, they never changed. The never year. changed. This is the whole time. My computer doesn't catch up here. Now this is the transmission pan that you would unbolt and take off, and then the little pickup screen that goes inside the oil pan. And if you look at the rating on this, again, this pan is 9.6, and the screen clogging is just zero. There is no clogging. There's nothing to rate. There's nothing in the screen. And these are, these are actual pictures from the certification of an independent engine component certifier who you can't pay him to make this stuff up. This is how he makes his living. He goes from one company to the next certifying these things. So this is amazing stuff. Might tell people the pan was black in color, not black in color. Yes, the pan was black in color, but it's almost like it's black in color absent of anything on its surface. Now, many times, for some of the people viewing this and our people right here, we talk about the clutch packs in an automatic transmission as being disc. That's what we're looking at here. These things are abrasive disc, and the way it works is when they are pressed and engaged, one set is ratcheted on one shaft and one on the other shaft. So when they come together, they force both shafts now to lock in and turn the same speed. So these guys are engaging and disengaging in a taxi cab about 100 times a block nearly, constantly as you're changing this from all stop to moving. It's a continuous engagement, disengagement of these things. So wear on them should be, you know, you should not have any trouble finding it. And if we look at the, when we, when we look for discoloration, on it, what we're talking about there is due to heat on these things and engagement back and forth, they will discolor due to the heat. Well, there is no discoloration, it doesn't exist, so they never got too hot. And the actual wear deterioration, he rates it as good. Well, that's not too bad after uh, 7,000 hours of operation and probably a million shifts. You know, that is just amazing, guys. <coughs> You'd have to go into one of our local transmission shops and look at some of these transmissions and what happens to them in normal use and see how these kind of things are just wiped out due to temperature and no longer functional. Yes, now in a previous uh, conversation we were talking about heavy gears inside automatic transmissions. Well, these are actual steel metal gears in a transmission protected by a 10W fluid, meaning a very light fluid, less than a 20 weight fluid. And these gears are, the, it's the, we have wear on it, it's called trace to light, trace to light, and trace. Now, what that means is barely perceptible. Now, if you see really worn gears on these things, I can tell you from my own experience, what you'll see up here at the top on these gears, they're no longer shaped with their nice <coughs> symmetric. They end up, <coughs> one of the sides on them, worn off due to the engagement because as these gears engage, this is the part that's really taking the pressure. And when they're not protected, they start to wear off and round on the tops. And then you get also down in the grooves, sometimes you'll get a flaking of metal because of the pressure that's pushed in there. It begins to flake them out. So these gears are in just almost perfect shape. And again, remember, this is a rated as 7,000 hours, 200,000 miles in a regular car. It's just unbelievable. Now one of the things in a transmission, obviously the casing, it's just, it's good when it's a 9.7. But these O-rings, we worry about O-rings softening and losing their ability to seal and do what they're supposed to over a period of time. So when we look at these seals, how do they, <coughs> the O-rings hold up? And what we see is that it says the condition is good 
softness, none. Uh, lightness, firmness, none. Uh, hardness, none. Uh, it's just nothing here. Deterioration, none. Everything in the evaluation, if there's anything wrong with these things, is none. So they have not deteriorated. They're in excellent condition. Just, again, fantastic performance. Now here's another thing that you have to do in transmission fluid. You have a friction coefficient. And what's so important about that is when those clutch discs we looked at <coughs> earlier, when those things have to engage, there's a certain friction coefficient that says these things can only slip so much and they can only go. And each company has a little different thing on that. Honda wants it to be hard, boom, no slip, okay? Ford wants it to be real soft, uh, Chrysler somewhere in between, so it's hard to make a transmission fluid to meet all these requirements with the right friction modifiers. But the important thing is, whatever you start with, you'd like it to keep going because as that wears out, your shifting characteristics really start to change and pretty soon your transmission starts to hurt for it because if it's not designed to have a bang shift, every time it makes a bang shift, it's banging something in that transmission. So you need that friction to stay the same. So what this test showed, is here's the upper limit for Mercon, because Mercon has this limit that ATF doesn't, ATF plus 4 doesn't have quite the limit, but Mercon does. So here's the upper limit, here's the lower limit. And here is the brand new transmission fluid is in blue. Now that brand new transmission fluid put into this cycle test. See on the bottom down there, they're going to go through thousands of cycles on this thing, right? All right. This is the fluid here, starting right here after 7,000 hours. Put it in this test. So they took the used fluid with 7,000 hours and started it in the test the same as the brand new fluid. Well, obviously, it's a little different to start with, but then as this fluid starts going through the, the cycles, it joins up with it, and they stay virtually the same all the way out, indicating that the AMSO synthetic transmission fluid never really changed its friction coefficient status in the 7,000 hours or even when they ran it back through this test. Didn't change it. Fantastic performance. And this is simply an indication of if you test the fluid and you say, how much life is left in this fluid? Well, this is a new fluid. It says it would go 150, and this thing over here, I can't hardly read it, but anyway, oxidation test. It'd go 150. Well, this is the, after 7,000 hours of operation, this amsoil transmission fluid still had this much left in it compared to the new. So it had about another 100,000 miles left in this transmission fluid when they ended the test at what we know would be, and by the way, we do miles somewhere around 200,000. So that's saying this fluid might have lasted up to 300,000 miles in this taxi cab test. It's just numbers that, that are mind boggling to tell you the truth. It shows a fluid which is almost indestructible. Now this test here is a gear test. There's 12 uh, tests that you do on the gears with the fluid and to see whether or not the fluid holds up to what it's called, believe it or not, it was a German test, it's called Failsy Gear, okay? And that's what the SCG stands for. And uh, we won't get into the mechanics of the test, but what it shows here is that the, this is what's required to pass and this is the used fluid exceeded the pass requirement even though it had 100, you know, 7,000 hours on it. It did not fail the test for new fluid. So again, if you look at this, you say, well, what could you have done to better protect your transmission than this group of taxis? Nothing other than take the transmission out and put it on the shelf and not use it. It would have probably been better protected, but that's the only way if you didn't put it in use. Now, on this one, what we're saying here is that total acid number, we talked about total base number in another one of our presentations, total acid number tells you only how much you can, this product can become acidified in its use because remember, total base number 
is there in an automotive oil to neutralize acid due to the internal combustion going on. There's no internal combustion going on here, so I'm not neutralizing acid, but my, my product through heat and activity may acidify. So I have a limit on how much it can actually acidify and remain in uh, use. So what we see here, the total acid number, is that the, uh, I'm trying to read this thing, I don't read very easy up there. <laughs> I'm back here to look at it. What we got is that this is the maximum limit allowed, okay? And this is the uh, multi-vehicle transmission fluid after 500 hours, and this is after 800 hours. So 800 hours of use in that particular test, and it still hadn't reached the limit, okay? So what we're getting at is this is a very stable product that doesn't acidify to any great degree. And then down here was one more they threw in here that had to do with Ford and their test. And this again was at 300 hours and this is at 900 hours and it still doesn't reach the limit. Yeah. So showing that these, these products are bulletproof. So now, let me just stop for a minute and just review on the transmission fluid. 7,000 hours of operation, which could easily be construed to be over 200,000 miles, as Marty said, and every measurable teardown was right at the 10.0 scale, 9.6, 9.7. Nothing that you could even show. Then the used fluid was tested in applications against what could have been new fluid, and it performed as well as the new fluid. So that test is actually, uh, I'll just say it again, it's actually amazing. I mean, I've looked at a lot of tests and a lot of field tests, and this particular test on this transmission fluid to me was absolutely startling. And I've seen a lot of these. I couldn't believe with 7,000 hours that you could get that kind of performance. I would have expected maybe some sevens on those teardown tests and some other things not 9.6 or 9.7, as if it hadn't even been used. And then to turn around and look at the fluid, it's still got another 100,000 miles left in it to run after that. So remarkable test, remarkable test. I don't know of another transmission fluid out there. Uh, I wouldn't say there isn't one, but that's a remarkable test. Nobody else has shown that kind of a test. Now in the engine test, again, we're doing 1,005 hours, which using the city conversion is about 21,000, but using the highway version is 48,000 miles between oil changes. Now, so let's back that to a mixed version and somewhere around 30,000 miles. Yep. So 30,000 miles of mixed driving, if we use that, and that would be the change intervals. So I don't recommend 30,000 mile oil changes to my fleets. So this is beyond what I would recommend. We stick with about equivalent to about 20,000 miles, okay? So this is pushing even beyond where I have recommended in the past, and this is eye-opening for the performance. Now this first picture is showing us an oil pan and a pickup for the oil pump. And we have a mechanic in the room that's looked inside oil pans before. This is sparkling clean. I mean, these tanks can be opened up with 50,000 miles on them and there can be a sort of a gooey substance in the bottom of the pan, which is just some oxidized sludge laying down there. It's not really hurting a lot, but it's there. And you clean it out when you clean a pan out. You don't think twice about it. But there is nothing in this pan. And that pickup tube has nothing. It's no interference whatsoever. And the guy that rated it, he rated them as the oil pan sludge, uh, nine, I don't know if that's 63 or 03, and then a nine on the oil pan varnish, and one. He sees a little bit of residue on the screen. So that's 1%, is what that stands for there on the screen, 1%. So this is extremely clean, and we're talking about after equivalent to somewhere around 30,000 mile oil change intervals, but that's not the end. We went 
7,000 hours before these tanks were taken out and looked at. So in the 7,000 hours, we did seven oil changes at 1,000 hours each. So remarkable. These are cylinder heads, and again, they're just clean. They're just remarkably clean. And the rating on these guys, 9.63 for both. I don't even know how that guy makes those determinations, maybe with a 4X magnifying glass, you look at them, to get a number like 9.63, it just seems remarkably uh, precise for something that's a visual inspection. But anyway, my point is, is that these are again clean, remarkably clean. Yes, now these are camshaft pieces, okay, uh, and if you look at them, all you see on these is what we call just a polished surface. There's no when you really get wear, you'll see it, because what you'll see are grooves cutting in there in different places. There's nothing. It's just, just clean. A little polish on it, that's it. And I mean, this is, those guys are under a lot of movement over a period of 7,000 hours. They haven't been sitting still. This is the front cover to the engine. Inside, you can see it for yourself. It's just, you look at the rating on it, it's 9.84, 9.8. Over here, where it talks about uh, the seal, there's nothing on here, it's all none. And then there's a little bit of carbonating, it's moderate, a little bit of varnishing, very light. And that, Temperature in standard oils will load that up in this period of time in hot weather. It's not the fault of the oil. Uh, petroleum oils don't have the temperature range to put up with that. So they would just have loaded this thing up with varnish and sludge in the end around that seal. Now, the conclusion, I mean, you, you can make your own conclusion. The conclusion is, is that we ran this oil, this 20 weight oil in taxi cabs for 7,000 hours, and everything we looked at was not only good, it was remarkably good. And so the question is, if you ran a 20 weight oil in your new Toyota, your new Mazda, or your new Honda, these cars that all are calling for 20 weight oils, or your new Ford, and you had to ask yourself, would you rather run a 20 weight oil that proves this kind of protection, or a 20 weight oil that gives what I would tell you, Noria, the huge oil analysis company, wrote a long test on this, wrote an article a number of years back talking about the fact that 20 weight petroleum oils, by the time the car had 70,000 miles on it, would have had enough additional, additional wear to reduce the compression sufficient enough to reduce fuel economy for the rest of the life of the car. That's when they first started coming out talking about 20 weight oils. So if you're going to run 20 weight oil in these modern high performance cars, and because believe me, these small engines are virtually high performance, producing a lot of power in these small cars, run a high performance synthetic 20 weight oil, and you'll run that engine many, many thousands of miles. And I think this test shows that if you want, what well, right now I would say is just without any qualification, the best 20 weight oil in the market come by the Amsoil Signature Series 0W30 or 5, not 0W30, excuse me, 0W20 or 5W20 because the performance is undeniable. And this is not Amsoil, this is an independent person that tears these things down. The pictures and the teardown by the independent guy, they just don't lie. They give clear facts of high quality and performance. You get what you pay for.